Today, I'm going to be polishing the mold. Welcome to another episode. Mold polishing is something that I avoided for a long time because I had heard that it was a lot of work and that people didn't enjoy it. So I pretty much did what I could to keep from having to polish a mold. But in one of the, the recent molds that I did, the tool marks were pretty obvious. So I decided to take the plunge and see what was involved in polishing a mold. What you're about to see is my learning process. I took, a, I basically skipped over some things, but you're gonna see where I started and where I ended up. So let's head to the bench and I'll show you why I needed to polish the mold. If you look, uh, you can see the lines from the cutter. And I would like to get rid of these today. On one side, it's more noticeable than on the other. Because on the second side, I ran the cutter much a pet tool path much closer together. So I had much smaller step overs on this side than on this side. So my goal today is to polish the side of the mold that is the worst of the two and then make some parts and see how it turns out. Here's a mold that I already did some polishing on. And this is just the preliminary polishing. But if you look at this one compared to this one, you can see the tool paths are quite clear here, but I've pretty much gotten rid of them. And this is polishing with uh, these right here. So the, uh, actually let me do it this way. Uh, these are something that I purchased a long time ago and I'm just finally getting around to using. So the different uh, polishing sticks have uh, different grit. And so I'm starting out with the teal one, which uh, says 4,000 grit. And then I'm using, instead of water, which is what they suggest, I'm just using some WD-40. So I'll start out with, if I look at these two, this is the one that has the more obvious tool marks. So I'm going to start with this one and I'll remove the uh, alignment pins for now. So I'm going to grab uh, one of the teal sticks and then just put a little bit of uh, WD-40 on there and uh, start polishing. And you can see that it's starting to work because you can see some of the uh, the dark oxide or uh, I guess I, you know it becomes dark you know, there's a dark powder or something and I'm guessing it's the aluminum oxide that's a result of the aluminum that I'm polishing off and turning into oxide and oxidizing so I've just haven't taken very long and I've polished a little bit here and let me just dry this off and you can see what the difference looks like. So even with just a small amount of polishing, you can see how quickly I can get rid of the tool marks. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, keep doing this for a little while uh, with the teal, which is the 4000 grit. And then I may come back with uh, some of the other grits and uh, try them out to see if that makes a difference in terms of making the, the whole mold uh, shiny. Now there are some sections like right in there that are smaller, but fortunately I also have uh, some, a smaller teal one. For some reason I only have three instead of four of the really small ones. So light purple is 6,000. So I think I'll use the light purple for these sections here. And you can see it's definitely working again because of the change in color. So let's have a look. And you can see it's already making a difference. 
So again, I'll go off and uh, polish this for a while and then uh, come back. After, I'm not sure, I didn't really keep track of time, but I think about 10 minutes, uh, of which part of that time was using the wrong, uh, the wrong one. I was using this one here, which I think is uh, 8,000 grit, uh, instead of the one that I meant to use, uh, which is the teal, which is 4,000 grit. So when I switched back to the teal, things started to go much faster again. Uh, but you can see that already I've gotten rid of a lot of the, the tooling marks, uh, except in the corners where this one is a little bit too large. So I'm going to switch to the, the medium one after I get rid of all of the tool marks. There are still a few areas where it's somewhat visible. And then I'll bring it back so you can have a look. After doing this polishing, I watched a really good video from Tormach that uh, talked about using um, a bamboo, ske bamboo skewer in their case, as well as some diamond compound. So I'm going to try this. And the other thing that they mentioned, uh, and I have a link above, is that you should polish first one way and then polish the other way. And uh, she does a really good job of explaining why that's the best way to do things. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of paste on the end here. Uh, apparently you don't need very much, and then I'm going to give that a try. If I can get it out. Okay, there we go. Tiny bit. It looks like it's doing something. Let me uh, zoom in. And I'm going to just start on a, a small region with a little bit of this and see if it makes a difference. I'll turn it around so that you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to try the, the side as well. And you can see that it is getting uh, dark, uh, which means it is actually making a difference. So let me go ahead and wipe this off and uh, see what we have. And yep, you can see it's making a difference. <clears throat> so now I'm going to try doing it the other way. So I guess I need a little bit more of the uh, paste. Okay, and let's see what it looks like now. Okay, so I think I might be uh, pressing too hard. Uh, I'm going to experiment with this a little bit more and then uh, come back after I learn a little bit more about it. I made uh, some more progress using the, the same uh, diamond coated or whatever these are sticks. But I changed the, the, the tactic, which is uh, I'm using uh, much lighter strokes along here. And I'm basically, uh, what I started doing is, is going like this and using very small stepovers and fairly light in one direction. And then after doing that, I would go in the other direction, also fairly light. And the idea, as you know, from the other videos, that going back and forth like this will result in it becoming smoother and smoother. So if I, you can see now I'm getting to the point where, uh, let me try to get it. You, you can still see the scratches, but they're going back and forth. But before I switch to the, uh, the final grit, I'm going to try to get into these corners with the toothpick because I can still see some uh, tool marks around the, the shop areas that I couldn't get to because this isn't uh, fine enough to get in them into the corner. As you can see, it's a little hard to get in there. So let me uh, uh, do some more work with the, uh, the toothpick and the, let's see if I can show you. So I'm going to 
get in there and now you can see I'm, I'm able to get into the corner. And I think I'm also going to try this part of the toothpick and put a little paste on, on it so that I can get in even tighter. Because I want to get all the way along here where I could not get with the the abrasive brush or whatever it is. And you can see this is uh, becoming dark. So I'll just go back and forth like that. And then I'll, I'll go like this so that I have a, a cross screen. And I'll bring you back after I've done this for a while. I'm guessing it's going to take uh, five or ten minutes of this to get all of the edges and the, the corners. Right down in here you can see some tool paths as well. So I'm going to see if I can use this toothpick to get down in here and to polish that. And uh, I may not need to do it. Right now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to see how far I can go with polishing of this because this is my first uh, time actually doing polishing. So I'll show you a little bit of that. And uh, as best I can, I'll probably have to angle this. So I'm going to get some uh, paste down there and then see if I can just Yep. It's changing colors, so that means it's working. And so the next question is, you know, what does it look like? Of course, then there's the question of how am I going to clean this out? I've been using a paper towel for the other parts to uh, clean it off so I can see what it looks like. And then the other thing is trying to go back and forth you know, in two different directions. So this is, uh, I guess you could say, against the grain, and then the other is with the grain, just to give it a name. And I'm not pushing that hard. Okay, so now that I've done that, now I can go back and do this direction. And let me see if I can clean that out with uh, some paper towel. So let's see if I can give you a... And it's definitely made a difference. You can see there are some tooling marks here as well that I'll, I'll work on and along here. So I'll come back after I've uh, uh, worked on all those different areas and show you the difference. I discovered something uh, as I was cleaning this up with a piece of paper towel, which I guess still has a little bit of the, uh, the diamond powder in it, as well as on the surface. I discovered that this was actually polishing it as well. And I remember someone saying that they, they could use just paper towel to polish, which, you know, I thought sounded kind of strange, but it seems to be true. So you can see this is uh, actually pretty good. Um, I can still see the tool marks if I get the light just so. And so that means I still want to do a little bit more polishing. But if you compare this one with the one that I haven't started on at all, the difference is uh, quite striking. So let me see if I can put those side by side. Yeah, you can see the difference there. The pattern here is quite obvious, whereas here it looks uh, pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, polish this one now and see what a difference that makes. And then after I get both of these polished, probably to this level, which is with the, the 4000 grit, I believe it is, I'm going to injection mold some parts and uh, see what they look like. And before I go to 8000 or higher. So after about an hour of work total on these two, there are still some marks there, 
But as I say, I'm going to, this is a lot better than it was before, and I'm going to try injection molding some parts to see how it looks. And this is the, the other half. And one of the things that I mentioned is that I discovered that I could take some, just a piece of uh, shop towel and do some polishing just with that. And you can see that already makes a difference. Um, so it doesn't take a lot to uh, polish aluminum and get rid of the, uh, the tooling marks. And I don't know if I'm making it better or worse. But uh, again, this is just with, uh, actually those are, look like finger marks, probably from oil. So this is, oh, that's why I keep touching it. Okay, let me try that again. Uh, so this is after an hour, and this is a pretty complicated part uh, compared to the other parts. So the other parts should go a lot faster because they're pretty close to rectangular without these uh, nooks and crannies. I just finished making a, uh, some parts with the plastic that I chopped up recently. And you can see the, the tooling marks are pretty much gone. So the polishing is doing a good job, but I'm getting the moisture marks. So that means even though I thought the filament would be good because it was in vacuum packed desiccant uh, bags, uh, it's still not dry enough. So I'm gonna to need to dry the pellets uh, before I make some uh, more parts. But I'm pretty happy with the, the finish to, in comparison, Here's the other one, and you can see it's quite obvious. I'm really pleased with how that turned out, and what I've learned from this is that polishing a mold is nowhere near as involved as I thought it was. And rather than being something that I would really dislike, which is what I was expecting, I found that actually kind of relaxing. My, my day job is one that requires a lot of thinking, and so polishing the mold is something that was something that required a little bit of attention, but not of a, a lot of attention. So it allowed my mind to relax and be free a little bit. Okay, enough of that. So getting back to the, the mold polishing, the thing that I learned is that uh, between the swabs, the polishing swabs and the diamond paste, I discovered it's actually not that hard to polish a mold. The other thing I discovered is that the best way to do it is to use fairly light passes and to go first one way and then the other way and go back and forth rather than keeping going in one direction back and forth. And so doing the back and forth as it described in the Tormach video produces a much better result. What you saw was going down to just 2000 grit and so it's not a, a mere finish, but it produces a really nice finish for the plastic parts. So I'm very happy with the results. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment below. And if you want to be notified of future videos, click on the, the bell icon uh, on the bottom right of the video and you'll get an email letting you know when I have a new video. See you next time.